Hello, and welcome to Universe Sandbox 2. So I have a suggestion you're asking. Put the supermassive star and the largest star, lock their positions, and put them close to each other. What would happen? Who would win? It really depends what you mean by supermassive star, because there's two different kind that come to mind. A Wolf Riot star, like R136A1, which there's only one of those in this game, and a pulsar, like the crab pulsar, which is significantly smaller. In fact, it's about the size of Earth. No, I think it's about the size of a mountain on Earth. Let's go ahead and put Earth beside it. Yeah, so it's significantly smaller than Earth. And then you have R136A1 right there. So... I think what I'm going to do for this video is I'm probably going to use a pulsar because there is something I would like to explain. Give me just a moment. Alright, so we have two stars here, uh, position locked. As you can see, we have the crab pulsar, a small neutron star. A super dense object that basically if it was any more dense, it would probably collapse into a black hole. And then out here we have UI Scuti or Scuti, depends how you want to pronounce it the largest star that we know about in our Milky Way galaxy. Now the thing is, in this game, currently, UI Skatai is 8.5 masses of the sun, while this little pulsar here is 1.4. Now I do have these pos position locked, so let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. And it doesn't appear the Roach Limit has any effect at this distance. So what I could try to do is go over to Edit right here, slow down time a little bit, and move the star a little bit closer. And see if that has any significant effect. So let's go ahead and drag this star much closer to the red supergiant, because currently it's actually super far away. Now we're getting quite close to it. And now let's see if we can pull matter away from it. Well, I'm not seeing any particles as of yet. Which is pretty interesting. Now, let's go ahead and try this with R136A1. So here is R136A1, the most massive star that we know about. It is approximately 260, maybe even more, masses of the sun. So this should be able to pull a lot of matter away from UI Skatai here, but the thing is, in this game, when two stars collide, they become, well, a supernova very quickly. So once it pulls mass away from UI Skatai and hits R136A1, a very unstable star to begin with, it's probably going to result in immediate supernova, because this game's a little bit simple when it comes to star on star collision. Let's go ahead and slow down time real quick, and let's hit play. Interestingly enough, nothing appears to immediately be happening. Oh, there we go. So as you can see, R136A1 is getting bigger, and eventually these two will merge together and form a supernova. Or it will just collapse UI Skatai into, what is this? Oh, a little gas giant. Interesting. I don't think they got close enough to initiate the supernova, but I'm sure if I went ahead and just put UI Skatai right into R136A1, they would probably explode. There it is, and let's just put it right in the center. That's kind of interesting. Oh, there it goes. It was only a matter of time. And let's explain what I wanted to talk about. 
All right, so here we are again. We have Beetlejuice, or Betelgeuse, however people want me to pronounce that. I'm gonna go with the uh, common American pronunciation, which is Beetlejuice. And we also got Crab Pulsar. It's a really dense object. Like, almost as dense as, well, not really almost as dense as a black hole. Uh, basically, if it was to get any more dense, it would collapse into a black hole and become infinitely dense. But that's not the subject here. See, when you have two objects like this, like a pulsar, they can have the potential to merge into a large star like this. Because this is a really non-dense object, a lot of its volume is dispersed into a large area as is common with dying red supergiant stars, typically. Now, there is a theoretical object called Thorn Zyko, I think. Thorn, Thorn Zyko? I'll probably put an article to it in the description. It is a theoretical star object, basically a star within a star. It is when you have two large supergiants orbiting each other, one eventually goes supernova, one's still alive, and the supergiant manages to consume the neutron star. Think of it like a plane flying through a cloud, or throwing a rock into water. Uh, essentially, what happens is this is a super dense object, and it kind of just ignores the existence of the other object and will pass right through it. Similar to like a bullet going through a ballistic shell, or something like that. Basically, a denser object going into a significantly less dense object. So essentially, this crab pulsar can go to the center of this star and, for the most part, become kind of a star within a star. It could become pretty much the core of this star. And that is a theoretical object, which I don't know if we've found anything like it, but it's something that is possible in our universe, we do believe. Now this is a bit of an exaggerated example, but I went ahead and put a sphere ring around R136A1. I'm just using R136A1 as a placeholder to kind of make it larger so it's easier to understand. Now imagine this sphere ring was the red supergiant that is present around this neutron star, if this neutron star was incredibly large and super dense. For the most part, they wouldn't really sit in the center core of the star, they would probably sit kind of orbiting the central core of the star, but inside its barrier out, you would say, its atmosphere, its surface. So let's go ahead and kind of see if we can move our 136A1 and move it a little bit off axis. Now if I hit play, I, th I don't think these uh, rings will be in any way stable around this star. That's kind of interesting. Um, I can't really move this object without moving the entire ring, it looks like. So. That's kind of unfortunate for my example, but basically imagine if this was a little bit off-center and it would orbit kind of the denser core of the star. And one has been discovered after a little bit of additional research and we found it in the Large Magellanic Cloud. But I'm not really going to go into too much detail on this because I might make a separate video kind of explaining these objects. But for the most part, the denser object should theoretically win compared to a lesser dense object as long as there is enough there for the Roche limit to apply and have it start tearing apart the parenting star, or the larger star rather. That is basically how black holes get their accretion disks, is it will tear apart other stars that are orbiting them, and the d accretion disk is basically remnants of that star being swirled around a black hole at a very very rapid pace. Anyways, if you guys like this video, please subscribe, and until next time, I'll see you in the next video.